Hi, Moral Recap here. Today I'm going to explain a British drama film called The Boy Who Harnessed the Wind. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. The film starts by showing a number of people harvesting their crops, collecting corn and putting it in their baskets. Kids will always be kids and they play around with each other. In an instant, a man puts his hands around his heart and collapses. We are then taken to a funeral and the priest says that God decided to take John away, but he will be remembered, just like a tree is remembered by the fruit it produces. In John's case, that would be his brother, Triwell, and his son, Jeremiah, who will be the one to continue his father's work. William, who is Triwell's son, is trying to fix a radio. Triwell asks him if he fixed their neighbor's radio, but William didn't fix it yet. Triwell tells William to go up on the roof and try and fix it. He then walks out and meets his daughter, Annie. He asks Annie if she was able to get any sleep, and she shakes her head, no. She's been having bad dreams. Triwell's wife gives him a uniform and tells him to put it on William's bed as a surprise. William later finds the uniform and wears it. He is ready to go to school. William crosses roads with his mate, Gilbert, and they walk to school together. Meanwhile, Annie listens to her mother, Agnes, speaking with some other women and saying about a girl whose family helped her get a job in the Ministry of Agriculture. Agnes later tells Annie that she will be able to get a good job as well when she finishes university. When they walk on the road to meet Drywell, a well-dressed man rides his bike past them. He and Annie smile at each other, but are careful not to get noticed by Annie's parents. That man goes at the school and takes a bunch of children to class. He introduces himself as their science teacher, Mr. Kachigunda. When the class is finished, William gives his teacher a letter from his sister. In return, Kachigunda tells him that he has to pay the fees to the school or else he can't keep coming here. William tries to study at night, but that's hard to achieve since it's raining heavily outside and the family has no electric power or light inside the house. William and Gilbert receive their graded tests the next day at school, and William thinks they can do better. They have to find a way to study at night. They visit a junkyard and try to find anything that would be of use to them. Right next, they walk to Gilbert's house where a council is taking place. A guy from a company is offering the people an amount of money to return from cutting down some trees out of their fields. Triwell and some others don't think this is a good idea, but Jeremiah signs a deal for himself since he needs the money. Later at their house, Triwell and Jeremiah argue about it. The latter insists that he needs the money, and Triwell tells him to quit gambling and save some money. Jeremiah tells him that this heavy rain has ruined their crops, and everybody is gambling this year, in one way or another. William and Gilbert attend what seems to be the local cafeteria at night, and they are listening to a sports game on the radio. But the radio stops and everybody is looking at William, wondering if he can do anything about it. William runs back at his house and asks Triwell if he is going to pay the fees to his school. Triwell says that he will pay when the rain stops and the fields start the production. William takes the batteries out of their radio and runs back to the other youngsters. He fixes the radio and finds the game's frequency. Everybody cheers. He and Gilbert walk out to return to their homes and they see Annie kissing with their teacher. The next day, Gilbert tells William to break Kachagunda's bike, so he has to walk to town. They approach his bike, but William realizes that kinetic energy produced from the pedal of the bike is channeled to the light that sits in front of it. William is impressed by it, but the headmaster expels him from their school because he didn't pay the school fees. The next morning, William returns to school and skips the morning assembly. He gets straight to class. When the class is finished, he asks Kachagunda about the light on his bike. The teacher explains that it is a dynamo, and William asks how he can build one. 
The teacher does not know everything and tells him to take a look at the library. William says he does not have a library card, and Kachagunda understands that William has not paid the schooling fees. William tells his teacher that he could keep that a secret because he is keeping a secret himself. There is a man coming to his village and visiting his sister Annie. Kachagunda gets the message and takes William to the library. He tells the librarian that he is working with William on a science project and says he should be free to make his research in the library. The president of the country visits their village and a crowd has gathered. The chief of the community gets on the microphone and says that he would easily vote for democracy, but he can't vote for a man who's turning a blind eye on the people's problems. He further says that the government should prepare and take some countermeasures about the harvests that are going to fail. The president's security takes the chief away, and they punish him by beating him up. Triwell's harvest does not go well, and the corn they have collected is not going to make enough income for the family. The prices are now very high, and the people are starting to feel uncomfortable. Triwell is angry, and he joins some protesters to go to the president and try to apply some pressure onto him. Agnes tells him to stay with his family, but he is angry and goes with the rest of the protesters. Annie has a meeting with Kachagunda, and he tells her that she should leave her village and go somewhere else. At school, the headmaster takes Kachagunda's place in science class and spots William. He now kicks him out for good. The people are running out of supplies. Two government trucks come in and people rush to buy grains. Agnes gives William all of their money and tells him to go and buy as much grain as he can. A man bursts into Agnes's house and steals a basket with food out of Annie's hands. Right next, a bunch of other men steal all of their remaining supplies from their storage. And worse, when the trucks come near the people that are waiting, the supplies are already finished. The people follow the truck to a warehouse where more people are buying grain, but the officials say that they can't sell any more grain today. The people rush towards the warehouse like a huge wave, and William is able to sneak into the warehouse. He buys 15 kilos of grain, and then waits inside the warehouse along with some others. The doors are locked and the crowd is still outside, waiting to loot whatever they can. The officials say they can't wait in there forever, and they will have to open the doors. William finds a slit open sheet metal and asks some men to help him. They kick the sheet metal open, and William is able to sneak out of there without risking being robbed. Triwell returns to the village and the family meets in their house. He tells his family they can have only one meal per day, for now, and asks them to decide which meal would that be. The family tries to get by on whatever they have for the next couple of days. Tryrell says they should give it another try and plant some seeds. Everybody says that the fields are dry and no plant can blossom. Tryrell prays for rain, but Agnes stops him. As she says later on, when they agreed to make a family, they also agreed to not pray for rain like their ancestors did. One night, William knocks on his sister's door and tells her that he knows she has been meeting with teacher Kachagunda. He asks her to speak to him and tell him he needs the dynamo. With that, he can bring water to the crops and make rain instead of praying for it. The next day, William ponders upon his thoughts on the fields. When he returns home, he finds his parents in a tense situation. Agnes is holding a letter in her hands, which was written by Annie. The letter says, One less month to feed. Annie has run away with her lover. Triwell asks William if he knows anything about it, but William has no idea. They visit the headmaster at the school to ask him about the teacher, but he can't help them. William asks him if he can at least use the library and the headmaster allows him to do so. William reads some books on energy production and comes up with an idea. He tells his friends that they need to try to build a small windmill as a test and see if they can produce energy from wind. They build the windmill and connect it to the radio. It starts moving when air comes through the room. The windmill works and it generates energy to turn the radio on. William goes to his father and tells him about his invention. 
He says that he can connect a pump to the well, which will draw water from energy produced by wind. But for that to work, they will have to build a large windmill, and he will need his father's bicycle to dissect and use its parts. Tryrell gets mad at his son for making stupid dreams. He shouts at him and tells him that from now on, he will wake up early in the morning and come with him to plow the ground. William goes back to his friends to ask them for help, but they are packing their things to travel north and maybe look for a better fate. William convinces them that his plan can work. They just need his father's bike. They pay a visit to Triwell, but they don't eventually steal his bike and leave empty-handed. Triwell has a talk with Agnes, who asks him how many things she has to lose. She lost many things since she met him. She lost her parents when she moved here. She lost the land, and now she lost her daughter. Triwell listens to her words and decides to give his son a chance and trust him. He gives him the bike and William gets to work. The people who are still left in the village gather and help him out. They build a wooden windmill with metal parts on it. The wind gets stronger and the blades start moving. William says that the pump's battery needs some time to charge. The battery charges and it starts drawing its first water. The water starts flowing and everybody is happy. They get to work and shovel some canals for the water to circulate around the dry fields. Triwell tells everybody to get the seeds and plant them. The film ends with William looking at the windmill and telling his parents that the librarian wants to visit him along with a government representative, and he may be able to get a scholarship. Before the titles roll in, we see a short collection of pictures and moments explaining what happens to the family after the film ends. Triwell and Agnes still live in their village. Annie didn't attend university, but now has four kids with Kachagunda. And finally, William got a scholarship and studied in the USA. Subscribe and hit that like button to help our channel grow. Turn the notifications on so you won't miss any of our new videos. Thanks for watching.